Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today, Sharing is Caring, Leveraging Churn Zero to Boost Collaboration with Customers. We'll give it another 15 or 20 seconds or so to let folks pile in, but excited to dive into uh, customer collaboration via Churn Zero with you all today. And as folks are popping in, I'm going to go over to the agenda. So my name is Brian Hoffman. I'm an account executive here at Turn Zero. I've been here for a, a few years now uh, and very excited to uh, be talking collaboration with you all. So plan for today is first, want to define what we mean when we're talking about collaboration with customers and then drill into why that matters, why collaboration is really important for um, boosting retention with customers and maximizing their experience. And then of course, how you're able to actually leverage Churn Zero to maximize your collaboration with customers and uh, increase that. So wanna use an example that I think all of us in customer success, whether it's client success, customer success, whether we're more an implementation, you know, an individual contributor or a leader, chief customer officer, one that we can all relate to in, in the space. And that, of course, is space travel. I recently rewatched The Martian, and it drove home really how powerful uh, teamwork and collaboration can be. And when I talk about collaboration and customer success, I mean working with your customers towards a shared goal. And for folks that might not have seen The Martian with, with Matt Damon, the premise is that he is an astronaut and he gets stranded on Mars and NASA finds out and they need to work together. They need to do things on Earth. He's stranded on Mars, but they're able to communicate and they need to work together to get him home so that he can survive. Um, and there's a lot of complicated things that he needs to do and they need to do and they really need to be in sync in order to accomplish their goal, in which case is him surviving and, and coming back to Earth versus staying on Mars forever. So that's our, our movie example for the day. Bringing this a little bit more earthbound, let's talk about why this matters for, for customer success. So there's a few big wins that you'll see when you're able to really increase the level of collaboration you have with your customers. One is that you're gonna be able to lower time to value, help get customers up and running uh, more quickly, and so they're going to be able to get more out of your system sooner. And that's always a big win. C customers that get onboarded quickly and successfully, the quicker, the happier, and the better. Um, and we've seen a direct correlation between lower time to value and higher retention. Another one is mitigating failure to launch. Um, so I've been at Churn Zero for a few years now. And before I started here, my previous company, Fishbowl, um, which helps restaurants with digital marketing, actually became a client while I was there. Um, and one of the things that, that was a, a struggle for the customer success team there is that these restaurants, like where the biggest churn area was, were restaurants that wouldn't get onboarded successfully early on, and they would end up not being able to, they'd fail to launch, and they weren't able to leverage Churn Zero's marketing software and services. And that's why they churned. It was very early in the life cycle. And stronger collaboration is something you can leverage to mitigate that. Now we're talking about preventing some bad things. On the flip side, there's also some great wins as well in terms of being able to boost engagement with your customers and have customers more excited about your solution. Um, and that's always a good thing that can lead to higher NPS, higher advocacy, and all of this of course leads straight to dollars where you can boost retention, net revenue retention, both by having more excited customers for driving expansion and also of course mitigating churn and preventing that. So that's a lot of the why. Want to get feedback from the folks here on our, on our webinar. How, on a scale of strongly disagree to strongly agree, where would you put yourself in terms of the level of how you agree with the following statement? That at our company, collaboration between our customers and us is important for our clients and our customers to thrive, using clients and customers interchangeably here. So I'll give you all uh, 10, 15 seconds or so to put in your responses. 
and looks like we got a lot of results flooding in. And I'll do my mid-webinar water break as the results are coming in. And all right, going to give it another five or so seconds. And all right, let's uh, let's check out the results. And Bianca, are you able to show that, or I can uh, I can share it verbally here? All right, so the results are showing. And this is a a a relief here. We have um, twelve percent that strongly disagree, twelve percent that agree, and seventy six that strongly agree. Um, so that's a big relief. If it was like ninety percent strongly disagree, uh, I might have to uh, let's see if I can show the actual results versus me just talking about it. Uh, I won't fiddle with the, the go to webinar. So. Yeah, we got a lot of folks that agree, which is good. I'd have to probably cut this webinar off short if, if otherwise, if people were like, collaboration doesn't matter. Um, so, oh, okay, people can see the results. Um, all right, so let's, let's continue on. Now that we've talked about the why, let's dive into the how. The way that you do this through Churn Zero is through journeys. And the first step is building a plan of what we want to do. So journeys in Churn Zero are the steps we want our customers to take to be successful at different points in the customer life cycle. Like what's the successful onboarding look like or a successful you know, next 90 day mutual success plan or what's a strong year one look like with our customers. Um, so before we're gonna collaborate with customers, let's map out the plan of what that looks like, what success looks like, what our actual goal is. You know, in our space bound example, it was getting home safely for Matt Damon. Here would be more around getting up and running properly. And onboarding will be kind of the key theme I go back to during the webinar, but there are other use cases, great use cases as well for collaboration and for, um, for these journeys. Now these can be big plans, like onboarding is not a small task. There's a lot of things that need to happen. So let's make it more achievable and more accessible for our customers by breaking it down into different milestones. So that it's not one massive plan, we're more breaking it down into smaller steps that we need us and our customers to do. Um, and so you can phase it out. Uh, a good way to think about it is are there maybe different handoffs? Like maybe our initial thing is uh, the sales to customer success milestone and then customer success to implementation or however you might approach that. And like one expression our chief customer officer, Abby, loves to say that fits well is like, don't drink the ocean. And this makes it much less intimidating for your customers. And then more specifically, let's make a, like a clear plan of what actually needs to happen. Let's not be vague about what these steps are. So these milestones are broken down into two parts. There are tasks, which are at the bottom right here, of the things that we internally as the vendor, as the company need to do, has the account executive provided the customer success manager or the implementation specialist, the handoff notes? Do we know the integrations? Have we scheduled the handoff call? And then of course, other things like, have we trained them on X, Y, and Z? Um, have we configured their account? Have we gotten them set up? So the things internally that we are responsible for. And that's kind of the project management-esque side of, of these journeys. What distinguishes this from a project management tool is gonna to be able to track customer achievements. So not really a theme of this webinar today, but a big part of Churn Zero is integrating with your application for usage metrics. So you can define what are the things that we want our customers to do to be successful. Like, have they logged in for the first time? If they purchase 20 licenses, have at least 12 of those folks set up their accounts. If we're an email marketing platform, have they sent out their first campaign? Um, so these can be automatically checked off based on our integration with your usage metrics or more manually checked off. Like if they provided you a document or if they sent you a CSV that you need to upload, you can define those as achievements as well for your customers. Now, this is all great and this functionality is very powerful 
our, our customers love leaning on this in churn zero, especially for like onboarding and success plans. However, historically, there had been a big gap with this um, that we've, we've had the journeys for a long time and there's been um, continuous enhancements to them. But a big hole in them historically is that there wasn't really a great way to use them to collaborate with customers. And so here's a review um, from a couple years ago from 2020. And thrilled to say that for whoever left this review, we filled this gap. There now is a way to collaborate um, really strongly with customers through Churn Zero. And that's through external journey reporting, which I'll now dive into. So here's where you can really get your customers involved. And this is a screenshot of like what your customers would see. So this is a, a customer can see specifically what their status is. And basically you send them a link that they access. Um, so it's always up to date in real time. It's not like a static PDF. Like it's always going to be up to date with the most recently checked off tasks and achievements. And there's a lot of big wins here for your customers and you. One is you're going to be able to inspire more confidence in your customers by showing them the path by saying, Hey, like we're not flying by the seam of our pants. We've put together a clear plan for you and us in order to have a successful onboarding process, for example. And we've clearly thought this out. On that note, you can also set clear expectations and timelines where if they think that this is gonna take a day, but it might be a few weeks, you can explain to them and they can see why that is and what actually needs to happen. Another big thing here is accountability. It needs to be done tactfully, but this makes it much easier to hold your customers accountable. Let's say, and we see this often with um, you know, our clients' clients, where they might be getting frustrated at a given vendor that things might be moving too slowly. Um, you can put it back on them, again, tactfully, that like, hey, if you check out the report, you'll see we've done all of our tasks. We've done all the things we need to do. We're waiting on you. Like, we need you to actually complete this training or log in or send out your first email campaign or provide us the visuals that you want us to embed in your system, whatever that might be, but you can hold your customers accountable if there are things you need from them in order for mutual success. And then on that theme and note, you can also keep customers on task. Maybe it's not intentional, uh, but maybe they're just losing track of the things they need to do. Um, you know, I imagine that your solution is important to your customers but it's probably not the only thing in their day-to-day -day that they're focused in on. There's probably a lot of other things they have going on. Maybe they just lose track of what they need to do, and this can help keep them on task, where if things are slowing down, you can give them a refresher of the things that we need them to do in order to keep moving through the, the process. And this type of like empowering people to see their status and why that's a powerful concept is not new and it's not even novel to turn zero. It's stuff that we all love being able to see access to what our status is. So for me, for example, and I imagine I'm probably not alone here, but we'll see, but is like over the pandemic, I've been doing way too much like Amazon shopping. I've been ordering way too much Uber Eats. And one of the features within Uber Eats that I love is that like they show me how my delivery is trending. Um, definitely taking, done too much takeout and too much delivery, but like, I'll know, like I live in my apartment building and I'll see that. All right. If it's like, you know, three minutes out, I need to get my shoes on. I need to go downstairs to the front of my apartment building and let the driver in. Like he's coming. I need to get ready or, or she's coming. Um, and we all love that knowledge of just like, how are things actually trending, um, uh, as consumers as well. So that's one way you can empower your customers and can collaborate with them. But of course, the more channels, the better. So another thing that we have are in-app checklists. When I say in-app, I mean specifically in your user interface. So if you're a B2B SaaS cloud application, when your customers log in to your tool, you can have directly there, powered by Turn Zero, a checklist of what they need to do. Um, one of the things that's really cool and really fun about them is that with that checklist, which they can directly interact with, um, and what, since it's directly inside of your user interface, they're never going to be more engaged than when they're actually logged into your system. When they check off a given thing, like if I were to check off this second one here, confirmed hardware arrived, the status is going to update in real time. So we see, all right, like I'm getting closer. 
And that gives your customers a sense of achievement that, all right, like I'm moving in the right direction to do what I want to do here and accomplish what I want to accomplish. And you can also use this to gamify the experience and make it more fun for your customers in terms of having them do the things that they need to do. And gamification is a really powerful way to keep your customers engaged. And same thing with that web-based link that I showed previously in the status bar, making this fun for your customers and like giving them that sense of accomplishment is a really powerful concept, not just in B2B customer success, um, but also for us as consumers as well. So I use some unhealthy examples, like too much online shopping, too much ordering food. I'll go to a healthier one of like fitness trackers, where we all love seeing ourselves progress towards a goal. For Apple's fitness watch, for example, the whole concept is around having uh, people, like the more steps you take and the more calories you burn, filling in the rings. And your goal is to fill in the rings each day. And the closer we get, like the more we really want to finish that up. And you can use that as motivation for your customers to do what they need to do quicker to get onboarded more uh, quickly and successfully and ultimately drive a stronger relationship with, um, with you. So that's kind of a, a key run through of, of what I wanted to hit on with you all today, you know, really leveraging those in-app checklists, those, um, the external sharing reporting within Turn Zero. So some key takeaways is that, and kind of the things we hit on today, Collaborate more with your customers and use that because it's going to empower them more and ultimately lead to higher net revenue retention. Also, inspire confidence in your customers by mapping out a clear path for what success looks like and having clear stages and steps there. And then, of course, make it more fun. Um, give customers that sense of achievement as they're moving closer and closer to their goals. So that is the, the uh, key things we want to hit on today. I'm now going to open it up to um, Q&A and let those pop in. All right. And it looks like we have one from Lucy, which is, how does this compare to a project management tool? Uh, we use Asana. And actually, we do have a, it's a great question. Um, we do have a native integration with Asana. Um, so we do have clients that use both, but there are a lot of wins for using that, like just churn zero for it. Frankly, the folks that use both, it's more that they've been deeply embedded in there for years. There's a couple key wins for using churn zero for project management. Um, one is that um, the concept of achievements where generally project management tools don't integrate with your application. Churn zero does, so you can use what your customers are doing you know, are they logging in? Are they using your most important features? And have that move customers along through the journey. The other thing is that having all this data in one place, like this is one part of Churn Zero and is a really powerful part of it. But there are a lot of other really powerful features within Churn Zero that our clients use to maximize retention, like automation through our playbooks, real-time proactive alerting, health scoring. And this project management, this journey data can be used to be fed into that. Like if customers do end up getting onboarded really slowly, we can know that, all right, they're probably at higher risk and we should be more attentive to them than folks that maybe got up really smoothly and like are probably happier with us. And then another question we have from Carly is, what is the design flexibility of the in-app checklists? And the short answer is, and I can follow up and send uh, one of our knowledge base articles that, that outlines it in more depth, there's a ton of design flexibility and we actually just last week launched a recent enhancement that gives you much more control over like the coloring and the styling and how you want to make that look and feel. Um, and I, we're at the 20 minute mark, so I don't want to hold us past our stop. It looks like there are some additional questions. We do see all these. I'll follow via email to address them. But that is all for today. Thank you all so much for taking some time and have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. Take care, everyone.